everyone. I'm walking through Golden Gate Park here in sunny San Francisco. A lot of people ask me, Larry, what's your secret to making millions in the stock market? The truth is I just copy other successful traders, such as Trader Stewie on Twitter, Kathy Wood of ARK Invest, and Nancy Pelosi. Welcome back to another video. Just recently, I was following this account on Twitter, Unusual Whales, and it said that Pelosi is using deep in the money call options. She just exercised 10 million in Microsoft shares on March 19th, and immediately after that, Microsoft was awarded a $21 billion army contract for the HoloLens. As you can see, Microsoft stock since March has been on quite a tier, as has Roblox and other stocks that Nancy Pelosi has been purchasing. And uh, these aren't just stocks, these are actually options. So Nancy Pelosi uh, purchased a Tesla options. So that got me thinking, where can you find this information? Where does it come from? Well, it turns out there's actually a transaction report when a member of Congress purchases stock or options like this. And so I downloaded one of these, this transaction report. You can see, for instance, uh, that Nancy Pelosi uh, purchased 100 call options in Apple and 25 call options in Tesla. And this is not a political party thing. If you'll remember last year, four senators uh, sold stocks before the coronavirus uh, crash. So you remember uh, Kelly Loeffler and other senators uh, dumped a bunch of stock right before the COVID crash around uh, January 24th. So I've been talking a lot the past few months on how you track activity of other traders, whether it's someone on Twitter, Wall Street Bets, uh, Kathy Wood of ARK Invest and so forth. And so that got me thinking, why not do a tutorial on following along with what Congress is doing. After all, we talk about following insiders and the smart money. Well, uh, who has more inside information than someone that has the power to create our laws? So today I'm going to show you how to use Python in order to programmatically download these financial disclosure reports on house.gov and then parse out the text using this PDF library in case you want to take this data and do something interesting with it, such as creating an API or some type of app that follows this unusual activity. So let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. So I know there's probably a lot of other people who have already built apps that do something like this. And someone usually leaves a comment about it below. However, I like to try to do things in my own way and learn a little bit more about the source data and write my own programs to interact with that data and put it together in my own unique way. So like any other programmer, I just Googled it and looked up stock disclosures and it turns out there's this uh, stock act that requires members of Congress to publicly file and disclose financial transactions, okay? And so the first result here is this Office of the Clerk, U.S. House of Representatives. There's a Senate site as well. This is the House version of that. And if you get to this website, you'll see there is a section in the overview here where it has all of the years listed. And since it's a government website, they obviously don't always have the top Google engineers working on this. So there's not some sleek uh, JSON API. Usually these uh, sites uh, return data in a weird format or you have to screen scrape it or something like that. So in this particular case, I looked at how the data comes back and it looks like they have it available to download by year. And so I can go to 2021 here and if I click it, you'll notice this actually downloads a zip file. So yeah, step one, we need to figure out how to use Python in order to uh, download and extract a zip file. Inside of that zip file, you'll see there is a text file and an XML file, right? And so the text file looks like it is uh, formatted okay. So if we look at this, it looks like it's a tab delimited file. And so if I searched for uh, Pelosi here, you can see uh, some dates and this last column. And if you scroll up to the top, this last column is called document ID. Also, there's an XML file in here, and that's just another format that's not quite as popular as it used to be. XML used to be uh, the, a big deal years and years ago, but most people return their data in JSON format or use uh, other, other formats. And so if you look through this, you see it's structured a little better since we have these tags. And so if I look up a Pelosi right here, you'll see it has doc ID wrapped around uh, this 
uh, these numbers here. So what is this document ID? I wanted to know what that was because from here I can't tell uh, what stocks were actually purchased. And so I copied this document ID and then I just Googled uh, Pelosi and that number. And if you do that, you'll see it actually uh, pulls up this periodic transaction report. And so it looks like all of these PDF files are stored in some directory here. And so what I want to do is use Python to programmatically download the zip file, extract that zip file, uh, get a list of document IDs from this tab delimited text file. So we'll, we'll parse a tab delimited text file, or you can parse XML with LXML or another library like that. And then from that, we should be able to use this URL format to grab that document IDs PDF here. And then we can download all of the PDFs or we can use another library such as uh, this Pi MU PDF library here. There's many PDF libraries and we can use a library like this to actually extract uh, text from this PDF document. And it's unfortunate that this isn't in the nicest format, but I thought this would be a good exercise to try a variety of libraries to deal with messier uh, data problems where you don't have data we don't have data in the nicest format. So now that we've briefly discussed the steps that we'll take in order to get the information we're looking for, let's go ahead and write a quick Python script to get this information. So I have a little folder here called uh, trade like Nancy and I have nancy.py in here and I'm just going to import a couple of Python packages. So I'll import CSV that's built into Python. I'm gonna import JSON because we might need that later and I'm going to also import a zip file. And I'm also going to import a couple of popular packages that are not built into Python, but you might have them installed already. So uh, we've used requests before. Requests is just a library for making HTTP requests. So we can request a URL and download a file or uh, download some JSON data. And I'm also going to uh, import PyPDF2. And so if you don't have these installed, what you do is you you do uh, pip3 install requests and pi pdf2, okay? So what's the first thing we want to do? The first thing I want to automate is downloading this zip file. So over here, I can see where it's linking to. And so I'll just copy, I'll right click and copy the link address. And so I can just say zip file URL equals, and I'll just store that as a string. And so let's see if I can use requests in order to download this file. So I'm going to do r equals request.get uh, zip file URL, okay? And if I run that, it will actually request that zip file, but it doesn't do anything with it. So what I need to do is download that zip file and write it to the file system. So what I can do here is just open a new file. So I can do with open and I need to give it a name. So I'll give it a name called zip file name equals, and let's name the local file, uh, 2021.zip, okay? And I will uh, use the zip file name right here. So I'm going to open it and I'm going to open this file for uh, writing. So we're essentially creating a new file on our disk called 2021.zip 20, uh, and I'm going to open it uh, as f. So I have a reference to that file and then I do f.write, okay? And I'm writing r.content, so r. Uh, this is a reference to this request. And once I uh, finish this request, I'll have content and I'm going to write that content uh, to the file system. And if I run that, okay, you'll see there's a 2021.zip right there on my file system. So that seems to be working pretty well. So now if I go to my file system, I have this zip file. Uh, let's see if I can open it up. Okay, and you see inside of it, I have my text and my XML file here. So that seems to be working. I successfully downloaded the zip file, but I don't wanna to have to click to unzip it on my desktop. I want this to all happen programmatically. So the next thing I wanna do is unzip a file programmatically. So I imported this uh, package called zip file. And so what I can do is do with zip file dot zip file. And just so you know, uh, the zip file uh, package is right here. So if you look for it, uh, it shows you how to work with zip files and you'll notice there is a class called a zip file and if you look into it you can see the zip file object here and you just need to give it a file and a mode so you can open a zip file uh, for reading. So I'm going to do zip file dot zip file 
and I'm gonna give it my zip file name, which I've already specified as 2021.zip, and I'm going to open that for reading. So it opens for reading by default. And so I'm going to open that file as Z, and then I can call Z dot extract all. So that will extract the zip file and this extract all, um, all it needs is a path to extract the files to. So I'm going to extract it to, um, I'll just extract it to the current directory. So I think I can just use a dot there. So um, I deleted the zip file. So let's see if I can programmatically download the zip file and extract it. So I'm gonna run this one more time. And you see that it automatically downloaded the zip file and it also extracted it. So now I have this text file here uh, in the same directory, okay? So that's good to go. So now that I have this text file and this XML file, um, I'm going to parse one of them. So let's just use this uh, CSV module to open this text file. So to do that, I can just do with open and just do a normal uh, Python open. And so if I knew the name of the file, I can just do fd.txt, or we can open a directory and scan through anything that ends with text file and parse all of them. So one thing we might wanna do is uh, download all of the zip files that are on that page. So I'll open that file as, and I'll just use F again here since it's local to this with statement. And I'll do for line in csv.reader and I will give it the uh, F here. And then I'll say delimiter equals uh, slash T since it's delimited by tabs and not a comma here. And so for each of the lines in there, uh, let's go ahead and just print the line and see what we get. So I run that, downloads the file, extracts it, opens the text file and you see we have a list of lists here. And so you can see that uh, CSV file parsing worked and you see they're in alphabetical order here and I can find ones that have a uh, Pelosi in them. And it looks like uh, index zero, index one here is the last name. And so what I can do is say if line one equals Pelosi and you can uh, pick on any uh, congressperson you want to. For some reason, I'm picking on Pelosi here uh, just because uh, that street happens to be uh, near my house and it was in the news, uh, but pick on anyone you want. So I'm gonna do if uh, line one equals Pelosi, uh, then I'm gonna print the line. And so we'll just print those, okay? And you'll see that just has Nancy Pelosi trades and then the document ID. So we'll get this document ID and that's gonna be a uh, line uh, eight, because that's the eighth index there. And then the date is uh, line seven. So let's say you want the date, uh, you can do line seven, okay? So you could store these values and do whatever you want with them. Maybe you want to send yourself a notification if there's a new document available or something like that, okay? So I got that information now. And so now what we want to do is download the actual uh, document. So uh, we should have the pattern here in our browser, so I pulled up this PDF file, and what I can do here is get the URL for the PDF. So I'll say PDF file URL equals, and this will just be the base URL, and then what I can do here is just uh, substitute in whatever document ID it is, and so that's the PDF base URL, and so I can do r equals request.get PDF file URL uh, plus, and then we can do the document ID, and then we'll do a plus a dot PDF, or you can use an F string, so you can do uh, something like this. So we'll do a PDF URL, and then we'll do doc ID dot PDF like that, and I believe that will work. And then I can, again, write those to the file system. So I'll do with open, and then I'll do uh, another F string, and I'll do a doc ID, dot pdf dot pdf as and then we'll say uh, we'll give it a new file handle since we already used f uh, locally in here so I'll do as a g or pdf file and then I'll do f dot write r dot content here and if I do that let's see if we get it so I'll run that no such file or directory uh, I need to open this for uh, writing so I'll do uh, WB here. So uh, it needs to write a new file. So I need to pass that second parameter. And if I run that, and I get this error, write must be a type string, not bytes. And oh, I used F right here when it really I called it PDF file here. 
So that's the disadvantage of reusing these variable names uh, over and over again is that I had it nested up here. So what I want is PDF file dot write r dot content. Okay, and if I write that, uh, this should write the files and you'll see I now have three PDF files locally here for each of those documents that was inside of the text file that was inside of the zip file. So now if I go here uh, to my local finder, I should be able to pull up uh, these documents. And so I can inspect uh, Nancy Pelosi's trade history for 2021. And you see this Alliance Bernstein holding. What is that? Uh, let's check it out. So we have Alliance Bernstein uh, holdings here. And let's see, has this been a good stock to buy? Let's see how the trades are going. And yeah, sure enough, looks pretty good over the past uh, six months to a year, but everything's kind of gone up. So uh, looks like it's been a pretty good one to buy. And uh, yeah, what's, what's significant about uh, this company? Who's worked there before? Kathy Wood. Kathy Wood worked there actually in 2001 before uh, ARK Invest. So I thought that was kind of an interesting uh, coincidence. Uh, so yeah, you see Apple, Tesla, and Walt Disney are in here. And then we could even open up some of the newer documents. So uh, let's see what's in here. Let's see, we got more of this AB stock. So that must be a good one. So, uh, and, then, and then the last one obviously is the one where uh, we found the Microsoft uh, call options that were purchased. Um, and this is an exercise of the call options that expire March 19th. And so it looks like uh, these uh, Microsoft calls had a strike price of 130. And then there's this Roblox purchase right here. And so, uh, yeah, that's how we programmatically download the zip file, extract it, um, open the text file, parse the tab limited, delimited file, and then programmatically download some PDFs uh, from the web and download them locally. And then as a final step, let's say we don't want to read through a bunch of PDF files with our eyes. You know, this channel, we want to automate everything. So if we want to extract text from a PDF file with Python, what do we do? Well, Python has a lot of cool libraries. This is one PDF library and here's another one, PyPDF2. So I ended up trying uh, this library right here called PyMUPDF and it has a variety of examples here. So let's find the documentation and usage here. So if you go to the documentation for this library, there's this uh, import fit. So this is called F-I-T-Z. And so this is the one I'm going to use. Um, I think I tried two of these PDF libraries. So uh, yeah, that's why I imported PyPDF2 earlier. You can use either one. And so I ended up using this one. And so to open a document, I can just take this part, which is doc equals fits.open and you just need to give it a file name. And I have a file name right here. And uh, I don't wanna download all these files again. So I'm gonna comment this all out. So uh, you get the picture here. And so let's see how to open a PDF file. Let's just isolate uh, this part of the code. And so let's just put uh, 2001.8539.pdf, right? And if we want, we could put this inside of the loop and open up all of those files. And then according to our documentation, uh, you can load pages. So there's a method called document.loadPage. And if we look at that, it just needs a page ID. And so we can do page ID equals uh, zero. So let's try loading the first page. And so we'll store the result of that in page. And let's just print page and let's see uh, what it gives us. So I'm gonna run that. And it just says page zero. So that's not very interesting. And so let's call another method called uh, get text. So it has a method called uh, get text. So once you have a page object, you can call get text on it. And that should get the text of a page. So I'll call get text. If I do that, you'll see, look at that. We have some raw text extracted from a PDF file and you can see a symbol like Microsoft a corporation in there and start parsing away on this file. And so uh, just text, it looks like it's still a little bit hard to work with. You know, you need to figure out the description and the location. And so you can drill further and further into this library uh, to uh, parse this data. And so uh, there's some other methods you can use. So instead of just getting text like that, you can say JSON data equals get text and give it a type of JSON. And this is all in the documentation. And so if I print it as JSON data, okay, 
you can see it gives us like the coordinates of all the text of these bound it, bounding boxes and all the information you'd find inside of a PDF file. You see font information and so forth. And inside of there, you'll find information uh, about the PDF file. So a lot of uh, metadata. So I just hit the 20 minute mark of the video and rather than go on and on, I told you I wanted to keep these videos a little shorter and release more often going forward. So like 12 or 15 minute videos. Uh, so if you want to dive further into the PDF format, uh, play around with this library and dive into uh, the documentation. You can call methods on it to get the text, uh, get all of the pages, and then if you wanna explore uh, what's in this format, you can load the data as JSON, get the keys, and loop through all of the blocks and all the coordinates and whatever you wanna do. And so uh, feel free to uh, put this together in your own way. Maybe you want to send yourself notifications. Maybe you wanna build a uh, follow Congress web application on top of this. Uh, maybe you wanna send a text message or a Discord alert. There's a lot of cool ways you can mix and match this type of information and plug the data in. And the idea of this channel is that I just show little building blocks of this stuff and you can go back to other videos in the channel. Maybe you want to uh, store this data in a database and, and the list goes on and on of what you can do here. So that's it, that's what was on my mind. I saw a tweet about uh, Pelosi's uh, stock trades and I wanted to see where they got that information from and see if I could write a program to grab that information uh, for me. So uh, thanks a lot for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, take it easy, see you in the next one.